uh, we are working mainly in the capital. We used to work mainly in the capital of Ukraine, in Kiev. But we are living in the suburb of Kiev, in the small city Bucha, which became to be now known worldwide, together with the European, the Stormwell, and other parts of uh, small cities, which almost destroyed by our uh, former friends and brothers, and now main enemy for my country by Russians. So, sorry, no more politics. I will go ahead and try to talk about metallurgy mainly. Excuse me I've, if I will mention some something which is related to war and military application of ESR, because you remember the title of my speech, special melting mainly for special metals, special alloys, which very widely used worldwide for, very unfortunately, for military application. Now, let me show you the next slide. Uh, two outstanding scientists, Eugene Paton, founder of our institute and academician, Boris Paton, his son, his son who lead our institute within years. And the next slide, you can see very important from my point of view, sketches of the mm, electroslag remelting process itself. On the right side of the uh, slide, in the middle, electroslag cladding, and on the left, electroslag welding. The first process based on the ESR phenomena, phenomena of the current passing through the molten slag, which is not a conductive, electrically conductive in the solid state and can uh, be conductive only in the molten state. Uh, you can see both this, not both, three of this technology, ESR technology, major electroslag based technologies, has uh, practically the, sa the same main parts. One is a consumable electrode being remelting or consumable wire, like for welding and cladding. Also, position uh, three is a molten slag. Position seven is a molten metal. Position six is a weldment, or so seam, or cladded layer, or ingot, if you want. And finally, number four is a water called copper mold for electroslag remelting, or uh, instead of word mold, our welding colleagues or cladding colleagues saying copper shoes. Sorry for that terminology, but it's traditional for them. Why I'm showing before this slide uh, principles of ESR in compare with cladding and welding? Because ESR in modern uh, condition, in modern appearance, was born on the basis of electroslag welding. And you can see on this uh, slide couple um, copy of the American newspaper and magazine which shows the real uh, story or history rather to say history of electroslag remelting development which was born in the USSR. You can see electroslag remelting from USSR. And on the left corner, photo of Boris Medawar, let me say student and follower of both patterns and in the appearance of first laboratory installation and first year melted in 1952. So let's finish with the uh, history and come a little bit, uh, a little bit back to the, let me say, today application of electroslag remelting and uh, connection with the present war between Russia and Ukraine. For sure, within last days, within last months, you watch the uh, uh, map of Ukraine many times. You see the uh, map of Europe, you can see here, Ukraine, this is a black, I'm sorry, this is the Azov Sea, this is the Black Sea, and this is the Crimea, which was, let me say, withdrawn by Russians from Ukraine eight years ago. And now pay attention to this bigger map, 
map of bigger scale were indicated all cities which is connected with the steel industry of Ukraine. This part is the east part of Ukraine, which is also occupied by Russians eight years ago. But what is very important, and I do believe that next slide will assure you why uh, my position that ESR is the most important part of the special melting has rise and probably uh, you will accept my point. Please look on this slide, which shows the, the left corner known for you Mariupol city, which is almost destroyed by Russians. And also on the left corner, you can see photo of the integrated mill as of Stal before war. And now almost destroyed. You can see here link to the internet with a short movie how Azovstal was destroyed. Why? Let me make very simple statement, which is I do believe known for many of metallurgists worldwide who is dealing with the high yield steel. Majority of Soviet Union submarines and Russian submarines as well, and tanks were produced from the high yield steel, high yield, high yield 140 and higher, made it as of start via electroslag remelting. You can see photo of the outstanding shop built by our, uh, under our supervision, the basis of our technology about 40 years ago, and as of Stahl, I'm repeating that, was a main producer of such grade of steel for army. And please note, there is other integrated plant in the Mariupol city, which has a practically same capacity as as of Stahl, about 6 million tons a year. But main, let me say, attention of our enemies was paid by as of Stahl for previous reason. Let me go ahead and to skip from military application of electroslag remelting for some details of this process. Here you can see photo of my father when he was younger than I am today on the right side and show, uh, let me say, uh, overlook on the development of electroslag remelting processes beginning from 1952 till the uh, last decade. Now, some photos about new technology of electroslag remelting. On the upper part of this slide, two main diagram of ESR in the standard uh, mold, uh, excuse me, stationary mold, and short color mold with the withdrawing. And, uh, on the right corner, you can see comparison of ESR with the arc, vacuum arc remelting, and let me say intermediary process between ESR and VR arc slag remelting. So main difference is the usage of molten slag during electro slag and arc slag remelting, and absence of the slag during at vacuum arc remelting. And also here shown some sketches of other variant modern with the direct uh, usage of liquid metal instead of solid consumable electrodes. Please pay attention to this sketch which shows the manufacturing of hollow ingots of pipe, heavy worn pipe, using ESR. That technology was used in ESR and in the United States for military application for producing gun barrel for tanks within decades. But this is a different story. We will pay a little bit more attention a few minutes later. You can see here some example of ESR products, rectangular ingots, round shape ingots, Hollow ingots, what I, what I mentioned, steel copper, composite ingots, and huge slab ingots. Here is 40 ton slab ingots at Nippon steel, 
which was uh, uh, used for manufacturing for rolling heavy plates of high yield steel. So again, round shapes, square sections, slabs, hollow and composite. This is a spectre of electroslag remelting ingots or products, if you want. Now, please pay attention to the very, from my point of view, important thing. All we are metallurgists, we know very well that metallurgy is the uh, interaction between gases, slags, and molten metal. But only in the electroslag remelting process, we use on the name of technology, slag as a main component. All other dealing with electric arc furnaces or basic oxygen furnaces, but no words about slag. But I do believe you can be agree with me that, that particularly for uh, steel melting, uh, nature of the slag plays a quite important role. Moreover, right now we are thinking that sometime it's necessary to come back and to use the acid slag to produce steel with a, let me say, nice shape of non-metallic inclusion. Let me use such approach. So, just to pay uh, necessary attention to slag, I can uh, say that combination of slag and uh, controlled atmosphere at ESR gives us the possibility to make absolutely unique product with the outstanding level of quality, which known for many users worldwide. Now, a little bit more attention to the hollow ingot. Why? To answer this question, it's necessary to, uh, when we are talking about <coughs> products of forging shops, open dive forging shops. We can guarantee that about 50% of the product will be heavy wall pipe, in other words, hollows, and only 50, other 50% 50 will be solid bars. And debate about necessity to make hollow ingots as a billet for producing heavy wall pipes or other uh, product. Going within years in the forging industry, and some companies using solid ingots with upsetting, piercing, and follow, subsequent forging, some companies using hollows as a billet. But you can guess that yield in that case at least twice higher than in case of usage of solid ingot. So keeping in the mind that we are now in the time of the industry for zero and talking about high yield efficiency and so on, I do believe that ESR technology for hollow manufacturing is a great future, not only for huge pipes, but also for continuous casting of pipes, which never was realized in the industry by, in spite of many attempts. So you can see some hollows, including very, uh, let me say, real industrial data. Sorry to say, I, uh, I have to uh, refer again to Russia. Our uh, former brothers using our technology now allowed to, the, to use as cast hollow ESR metal instead of forged pipes for power generation, including nuclear power station is, I do believe, is the best evidence of high quality of ESR metal. Some examples of composite ingots made on the base of ESR for rolling mill rolls, for bimetallic ingots, even for uh, composite rebars with the stainless steel on the surface. To finish my talk, I would like 
to show you very known for majority of you sound structure of ESR ingots, which cannot be achieved by other method uh, of steel casting. And some example of bimetallic products made by electroslag technology. And to finish my talk, I would like to pay attention to the very important fact of ESR possibilities. A week ago, I, when I start uh, to talk without showing my presentation, I mentioned that from the very beginning, electroslag remelting was used for titanium. It's interesting that simultaneously with the first industrial furnace, industrial furnace for electroslag remelting of titanium. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about why ESR for titanium not used even today. You can see on the sketch on the right side, on the picture, how titanium nitrides or hard alpha phase could be removed during ESR from titanium. It's not our <coughs> result of our research. It's the result of research made about 25 years ago by our colleagues from General Electric, Dr. Mark Benz and his team. It was even mutual decision between our colleagues from GE, uh, Bureau of Mines, probably you remember the name of Professor Nabziger, who made a lot of efforts in the United States to push ahead electroslag remelting of titanium. It was even mutual decision to change the uh, technological structure of titanium production and to include electroslag remelting as a secondary part of titanium melting to guarantee removal of titanium nitrides. It's only one advantage, but don't forget, even today we don't have technology for continuous casting of titanium. And on the whole line of a special melting processes, only ESR has slag, which could use, could be potentially used as lubricant for making withdrawing of the ingot without any problem with the surface formation. I am sure that we will have a lot of advantages using ESR in the titanium production. And to come to the end, uh, advantage of ESR, possibility to use scrap rolls, for example, or scrap bars as a consumable electrodes and to recycle them many times and to use them again and again. It's very important and I do believe that uh, such uh, advantage of ESR will be used more and more. And to finish my talk, I would like to show you a uh, design of the vacuum arc remelting and ESR modern furnace. And you can see this process is, is practically looks and the equipment looks like a twin. The difference is the atmosphere, vacuum and uh, neutral, uh, preferably. Uh, argon or nitrogen atmosphere during ESR. But what is very important, for my opinion, not to uh, forget about possibility to use ESR for standard steel, not only for high alloy steel, super alloys, like it used widely today, but also for producing such simple thing like rails for railroad and wheels for high-speed railroad. Why ESR? Because for that purpose, mainly use standard continuous casting. And you know very well that it's impossible 
to avoid central segregation of the billets to be used for rolling of rails or railroad wheels. And keeping in the mind that I am entering into the course of which known for us within many years, like an outstanding expert in the field of, let me say, metal of physical explanation of behavior of the such great of steel, like high carbon uh, uh, steel for a railroads. And I can tell you right now that using ESR, we can increase at least twice workability of the rails without changing of the chemistry of uh, heat treatment of them. So, as I am fan of ESR, I do believe that ESR has absolutely nice future and amount of ESR metal produced per year will be more and more. You have two simple things, perfect quality and high yield. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot and be good. Bye. Yeah. Grazie. Yeah. Gra <laughs> grazie. Grazie. So, thank you so much for your uh, lecture and uh, lab. And now uh, I'm also pleased to say that we are in my office uh, here in the University of Udine. And I hope this is just the first of our uh, of the talks for our uh, future collaboration with you. And with say thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you so much.